organised and passionate, Australia has a long history of anti-nuclear activism. From the ban the bomb rallies in the 60s through to the anti-nuclear energy protest of the 70s and the fight against uranium mining in the 80s, the politics of nuclear power just as radioactive as any waste product. One side determined to keep it off our shores. We do not see a nuclear power plant as part of our response to our energy future. The other, strong advocates for bringing it in. If we're fair dinkum about this climate change debate, we have to open our minds to the use of nuclear power. The reason that we can't talk about nuclear as a sensible country is because there is so much political mileage to be made from the issue. In the past few years, both sides once again heading back to their nuclear policy bunkers. The Liberals are saying we are too focused on renewables. They think the answer is to put the most expensive form of power available into our grid. I just think uh, Chris Bowen uh, frankly is unhinged on all of this at the moment. If you look at what's happening in Canada, where 60% uh, of their energy source comes from nuclear, they pay half the electricity price that we do here. But with the climate crisis demanding a solution to emissions-free energy, can we talk about nuclear power without the politics? With a legacy from Chernobyl to Fukushima, nuclear power has a toxic history. The technological advances promise reactors that are smaller, safer and cheaper. They're called small modular reactors and are a fraction of the size of a conventional reactor. They promise safety and the benefits of nuclear power at a fraction of the cost and construction time. Potentially, they could be much cheaper. They could be deployed at a whole range of locations. They may also overcome some of the current concerns that people have with existing nuclear reactors in that maybe they can be made fundamentally safe. But the jury's still out on how big a role SMRs could play in our zero emissions future, with the Energy Minister estimating we'll need $387 billion to kickstart them in Australia. None of these yet exist in a commercial sense. And there's about as many in the world, not many more anyway, than there are unicorns I don't think there's too many unicorns. So beyond all the hot air from our pollies, should we seriously be thinking about going nuclear? Well, tell us, businessman and climate activist Simon Holmes Accord, who was a key backer of the Teal Independence at the last election, he joins us now. He's speaking on his own behalf. Simon, you've campaigned a lot on reducing emissions. Many people would expect you to be anti-nuclear power, are you? No, I'm not, I'm not against nuclear. I spent a lot of time recently in the US on a reconnaissance trip. Uh, I've spent a lot of time over the last five years researching nuclear, and it's a fascinating technology. The technology that would be suitable for Australia, SMRs, uh, small modular reactors, exists on paper. Uh, it simply doesn't exist in reality. Now, there are, there are projects planning to build some, and they might be up and going by the end of this decade. They'll be prototypes at first, and then hopefully move to commercialisation. Uh, but there's no conceivable world in which nuclear would play a role in Australia before the 2040s. So I'm interested in that bit. Why not? Because nuclear power is a really well-established power source in a lot of places in Europe. Uh, the UK is looking towards it. France has done really well out of it, especially given the war in Ukraine. Contra Germany, who's done badly in that situation because they don't have nuclear. So why should Australia be any different to that? OK, so nuclear in Europe is actually not doing that well. It peaked in 2004 and it's down one third um, from where it is. And then as far as new projects, there are only three projects under construction in Western Europe. So that uh, large scale nuclear, we kind of missed the boat for that. And if we were to start now, the first one would start generating round about the end of the 2030s. So there's a lot of hope in these new small modular reactors and there's, there's some really interesting things about them. I visited uh, two vendors, for people who are designing and hope to build them, and I visited one potential purchaser of uh, one, the one that's likely to come on first in Canada, in, in um, Toronto, Ontario. But if it does get up and Australia decided that we wanted one, uh, it's extremely unlikely that we would get the first nuclear kilowatt hour into our grid before the 2040s. I think you're referring to the Canadians' use of nuclear energy there. Um, you recently visited the SMR, SMR site over there, and uh, Peter Dutton is uh, repeatedly talking about how that could be a potential use of energy in Australia. Um, have you found yourself with an unlikely ally in Peter Dutton there? Well, I think Peter Dutton is not aware that they don't yet exist. But the, the, the hope is they will exist, um, that they, they will be built. But there is, seriously, there's not a single commercial small modular reactor operating anywhere in the world. There's not even a fully 
signed contract to build one. Simon, if we do go down this road eventually and we end up with a lot of nuclear waste, do we dump it all in the desert and eventually end up with giant radioactive bilbies? And please keep in mind that most of my education has come from The Simpsons. <laughs> Look, I, th I think that Australians are... Um, we, we, we are very afraid of, uh, of, of, of nuclear waste. So the public has to be brought along for a journey. But I think it is... It is a hazardous waste. It, it does have to be managed carefully. I have seen nuclear waste uh, facilities. I visited one in the US recently, and it just sits there. Uh, it just sits there. You're not going to get radioactive bilbies. OK, so I'll take radioactive bilbies off my <laughs> nightmares list. Just for, yeah, OK, that's good. Oh, I thought you cool. wanted them. <laughs> oh, no, no. Oh, no, okay. terrified. Jim. I misunderstood. No, they're Sorry. not terrorists. Okay. Not terrorists. Okay. Simon, thank you for your time. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs>